I've always been complaining about that. Norway is a very at large, if I can generalize. Norway is a very anti Semitic uh, nation. The hatred of, uh, and the resent of Jews in this nation have always been on the top of the scale if you have uh, if you are going to measure it in that way you see so you see that now you have this uh, case i think is it the washington post or new york times i can recall precisely but one of those uh, great newspapers in the united states that have um, found out that at least 120 people are are uh, supporting Hamas terrorism and support not only supporting Hamas but supporting the fact that in the acts of 7th October when where these Hamas terrorists slaughtered down 1200, 1400, what's the exact number? Civilian people, civilian Jews, families and babies and men and women and boys and girls horrific acts and Norway they want instead of following other nations like America and Japan I think and uh, Sweden our neighbor country Sweden among many others they withdraw their financial support but Norway they want to proceed sending money financing terrorism can you believe it but me as a Norwegian I'm not surprised I'm not taking taken by surprise by this because I have seen the resent of Jews and I've seen the hypocrisy not only since 7th October last year where you had that horrible slaughter of this innocent Jews but for many many years I have seen the hypocrisy and I've seen how in the Norwegian culture there is a hatred for Jews in this nation you don't have more than 1005 2000 tops Jews living and they are living under constant threats and fear and attacks from uh, this anti-Semitic people in this nation we can't and simultaneously Norway like to present herself politicians civilizations everyone most people in this country like to present themselves as guarding minorities having speaking up for minorities and being a voice for minorities but the least the greatest minority i mean with the least of number of people in that minority namely the jews in this nation they can support no one can speak up for them of these people that open their big mouth in different debate arenas and in the media and the social media and the mass media traditional media and so forth no one can speak up for the jews because they're afraid a part of that fear is because we have taken in so many muslim immigrants to this nation and of course the hatred of jews have been amplified and also not only amplified but more confirmed you see so this uh, particularly the left side of the politics not only the left side also the right side great number and parts of the right side of politics they have aligned themselves teamed up with the muslims in their hatred of jews so even after 7th october in that Jewish Jewish slaughter, that mass slaughter of, of innocent civilian Jews. There were no one in this country showing their real support to the Jewish people. Can you believe that? No anyone sending a flower to the ambassador in this uh, in the capital Oslo where I, I reside and where they obviously the the um, embassies people can't speak up because of their hatred toward the people of god and because of their hypocrisy and on account of their fear they're afraid they're afraid to be viewed as as someone uh, who doesn't follow the consensus doesn't follow the main narrative 
They're afraid of persecution. They're afraid to be isolated in their workplace, you see. They're afraid of Muslim attacks. They're afraid to be threatened. They're afraid to lose their jobs. They're afraid of name calling. They're afraid of standing up for the truth because they do not have integrity. There is no balance. Even when you look at the broadcaster, the state broadcaster, the other great media outlets, there is no balance. They only show one side on one voice and if they speak about something that will benefit or show sympathy to the other side, to Jews, to Israel, they will twist it in one way, distort it in one way. So it will also be turned into something negative as that we will view even that case or that article, it will help us to view Israel, put them in a negative light, amplify the hatred, and they come up with historical facts. They don't even know the history. And they nag about this, that Israel stole the land of the Palestines in 1948, instead of going back thousands of years back in the historic historical line, timeline, you see always framing things in a way that will amplify the hatred of Jews, always framing things in a way that will present and exhibit Israel and Jews as the big bad wolf. And the framing of the news of the stories in that war where many Unfortunately, uh, civilians are losing their lives in, in Gaza. They frame this in one way, that Israel bombed the hospitals, knowingly, with intent to kill and murder people, to murder babies, to murder innocent people. They frame it in the news. Whereas the fact is that Hamas and the Palestinians, they have their military arsenal under those hospitals or the terror tunnels that they use to kill as many Jews as they can so they can get their reward from Allah, their God, Allah. So Allah can be pleased that they have spilled as much Jewish blood as possible, you see. So people of God, our followers and other people that are not Christian, people all over the world, people in this nation of Norway, this hypocrisy and this weakness needs to, needs to stop, you see. This is not democracy to, to everyone throw themselves on one wave because they're afraid to confront, speaking about human rights. Human rights is there only to speak for one side because that side is weak in terms of military force. Because that side is weak in terms of being a assembled nation. Because that nation is weak when it comes to democracy and human rights. That doesn't mean and that doesn't legitimize those people so that they can go kill innocent people. And when a nation respond by trying to pursue the terrorists and the people behind that slaughtering and killing of, of, of Jews, that when they try to get rid of that problem, of the, that terrorist problem, that doesn't mean that the other people are bad. Because Israel is strong, because Israel have built up and constructed their country, their infrastructure, their military in a good way, because they are one people, whether they are Orthodox Jews or other kind of Jews that, doesn't, that are not so Orthodox or they have many groups of people, they are still one people because they are a democracy, because they have a strong military, because they are, have extremely success in the era of technology and because they have built up their relations to mighty nations as the United States with wisdom and also other Arabic countries. For instance, the, the deals that were about to get established with Arabic nations before this 7th October attack 
That doesn't mean that they are bad people. That doesn't mean that the people that throw rocks and rockets at them 24-7, although they are weak in terms of in terms of finances, in terms of democracy, in terms of human rights, that does not legitimize those people to go attack and kill innocent Jews. That doesn't in itself mean that Israel is a bad nation. So, and the hypocrisy, if you draw a parallel to Norway, because if that's the mindset, that we have to support people just because they are weak, even they do bad things. Then why, or partly it can be a good parallel, a good comparison. Why don't we then support 1,000 to 2,000 Jews in this nation, although they don't do bad things, they live quiet. They don't even dare to show themselves here. They cannot even walk, they can hardly walk openly on the street because of this failure of this uh, Norwegian government and the municipalities, the failure of supporting or protecting these people, I mean. So if you, Norway, you are standing for the minorities, why don't you stand up for the Jewish extremely small minority in this nation? Why aren't you a voice for them? So the hypocrisy and the is so is beyond is beyond beyond. So people of God, join me in praying for the people of God, the elected people of God, the Israelites. Pray for this nation, and pray for this hypocrisy, and pray for strong leaders and people standing up with integrity. Fearless people, people that can see both sides, people that can make sound judgments and not this cowardice and this hypocrisy. It's, it's, a, it's a shame. It's a shame. They have political debates. They are discussing this at the, the state broadcaster here in Norway called NRK. And there they have four or five people Hamas sympathizers that speak for the side of the Palestinians, whereas one person whom are invited try to defend Israel's right to defend themselves when being attacked like they got attacked on 7th October. It's so, it's so crooked, you know, there is no balance, there's no justice. It's too much. It's too much. So we, who are the people of God, we who have the righteousness of Christ, we need to stand up for this, not only in our churches, which we also have to do, pray, pray for this, you see. But we need to speak out in the forums, in the areas, in the arenas where we can speak out. We need to sign up for organizations do what we can do. You understand what I mean? People of God in this nation, other nations as well, speak out on the social media platforms. Speak out, you see, in a, in a, in a right way, no insulting one side or the other, no hating one side, no hating the other side, but speaking out with boldness. No being coward, you see. We need to speak out. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to speak out against this hypocrisy. We need to do something to change this mentality and this injustice culture, this injustice that lies latent and also manifest in this culture, like here in Norway and other nations as well. Norway is now portrayed and seen as one of the most hostile nation, nations to the Jews. If you look at the history of Norway, we should even be ashamed of ourselves when you see the, our uh, history of hatred toward the Jews here. 
you should maybe think that people who could take a distance just just because of that and then when you see politicians here in the uh, great political parties that has influence they say that they are standing up now when they have holocaust they are commemorating holocaust they have this meetings where they are they want to show sympathy to the jews because of that horrible thing that happened in holocaust then they want to show themselves display and and portray themselves as sympathetic and empathetic people but when there is time to really show support when there is time to stand up for innocent people being slaughtered and beheaded and raped people have nothing to do with a conflict then they shut their mouth they shut their mouth and they go hide themselves like a dog with a tail between the legs they run away and they go hide themselves among the crowds on the other side and they dig their head down in the sand and they go hide themselves in the consensus in the narrative so that they can proceed with their political career so that they can proceed continue to get taps on their shoulders so they can proceed being loved by the people getting more and more positioned after being positioned as a chairman of the party positioned as the president of the parliament positioned as the prime minister the for foreign minister they want to be positioned out in the great world united nations maybe nato they can enjoy the power they can enjoy the power and execute wicked acts and implement laws and other things whereas the people at the bottom of the society lower down in the society hierarchy suffer from their uh, decisions and judgments that they have made so they can grow more popular and sit in the nice meetings with the great rural leaders and enjoy themselves enjoying themselves with honoring each other and and applauding each other how great they are taking care of the climate that's most important for them taking care of the climate the wickedness is too much but prayer is a powerful tool prayer is a powerful weapon people of god don't forget that not only prayer for others but you praying for yourself that god will give you the spirit of boldness the opposite of cowardice as apostle paul told timothy god hashem didn't give you a spirit of cowardice a spirit that makes you timid but he gave you a spirit of gevura that word gevura that term comes from obviously from hebrew and it means miraculous power a spirit of power people of god a spirit of sound judgment people of god a spirit that makes you bold a spirit that makes you stand up to the goliath as our father king david did not looking at himself not looking at the crowds not looking at the people supporting him or not not looking at the giant jeering and mocking him mocking israel but looking at the power of god looking at the ability of hashem looking at what the lord could do no one himself or people around him that same spirit of boldness that same spirit of power that same spirit of confidence in what the lord can do that if the lord is with me i can go against ten thousand alone you see that's the confidence that we have we have the holy spirit of god because of the blood of yeshua 
that's the power that we have that we can stand up in the crowd we don't need to have we don't care if people applaud us or stand with us or against us we do what is right we speak forth what is right and justice and we're not afraid of anything I call on those people and if you do not have that attitude the Lord will give you through prayer that's the mark of the Holy Spirit in you as one of the marks of the Holy Spirit in you not going around screaming and yelling hiding yourself in the church and uh, screaming and yelling with this false prosperity gospel and all this nagging about prophecies and only thinking about yourself but looking around you looking around you look around in the society what can I do how can I be a voice against wickedness how can I be a voice against injustice how can I be a voice for the minority how can I be a voice for the mi majority how can I be a voice for Hashem for the Lord amen with integrity with integrity integrity in the word of Hashem integrity in Christ himself you see the Spirit of God makes us bold the Spirit of God gives us fervor burning with the Ruach HaKodesh the Bible says burning with the fire of the Holy Spirit spiritual fervor that's not only that you associate yourself with Christian people attending Christian meetings that's you looking out in the society what you can do, how you can speak up for what is right how you can hate injustice the Bible says let those who love the Lord hate what is evil hate what is evil hate what is injustice hate what is not right hate when injustice is being done let those who love the Lord hate what is evil you can flip it on the other side those that don't love the Lord they do not hate what is evil they love injustice they love wickedness they love that which is opposite to the holy commands and the holy words of Hashem the Dvar Hashem you see we are to pray for the Jews we are to pray for the Israelites we are to pray for the Hebrews from them comes the salvation we are grafted in on the tree we are grafted in from the outside we should be a little bit humble and thank God for the Jews and thank God for the salvation which comes from the Jews Amen Jesus died from, for the world he rose he gave his life on his own accord for all the world but before that he came to the Jews he elected the Apostles they were all Jews Yehoshua himself he was a Jew he told the woman that we don't that begged him for a miracle you, you do you remember what the Lord said because she was not a Jew we do not give that which is sacred to the dogs and because of the woman's immense faith he gave her he touched her life you see but don't get me wrong Yeshua died for all the world Jews Gentiles Hinduists atheists Muslims Buddhists agnosticers agnostic I think don't know how you pronounce that in English forgive me people of God for mixing up sometimes uh, Norwegian words with with English he died for and rose for all the world you see but my point is that we should show some humility everything that we have the scriptures the Kitve HaKodesh the new the Brit Chadasha the new covenant the new testament 
is all based on the Tanakh, the Holy Scriptures, that which, which comes from the Jews, the things that Hashem, that the Lord handed over to the Israelites, to the Hebrews. Amen. So let us show humility, let us show love and integrity, let us show boldness. And if you don't have that boldness enough, then pray and the Holy Spirit will give you boldness. Above your own weakness, your own boldness, I almost said, which is nothing. That's why the Bible says when we are weak, we are strong. If you are, have fear, you pray to Hashem and He will give you boldness. Amen. So God bless you people of God. See you next time.